Hello and welcome back. We are now halfway through the first unit of our MOOC, but there are still a few topics we need to cover before you can move on and start learning about the actual practice of accessibility. In the previous videos, we talked about the different target audiences accessibility managers and coordinators have to cater for, and about the different services they can offer to people with disabilities to improve their access to cultural venues and events. In this video, we will take a slightly more theoretical approach and frame the topics we discussed in the previous videos conceptually, by introducing some basic terminology that is used in the field of accessibility. More particularly, we will focus on the term disability and on the concept of inclusion. When we talked about the target audiences of the various access services, we sometimes refer to them as people with disabilities. But what exactly does that term disability cover? It is important to realize that this is a term that has been defined in a lot of different ways, depending on the historical, social or cultural context it was used in. For the purpose of this MOOC, we will use the general definition formulated by the World Health Organization that describes disability as follows. Disabilities is an umbrella term covering impairments, activity limitations and participation restrictions. An impairment is a problem in body function or structure. An activity limitation is a difficulty encountered by an individual in executing a task or action, and a participation restriction is a problem experienced by an individual in involvement in life situations. In other words, a disability is any kind of bodily impairment that prevents people from performing everyday tasks or actions without difficulties and hampers their full participation in any kind of activity in their private or public life. As we already saw, these disabilities can be of various natures. They can be sensory. Think of people with a visual or hearing impairment. They can be physical. Think, for example, of wheelchair users. They can be cognitive or mental. Here, we can think of people with low IQ or people suffering from ADHD. Or they can be developmental, as in the case of people suffering from autism. Because of their impairment, people who are affected by one or more disabilities encounter difficulties when participating in public life situations, including cultural events. In the second half of the 20th century, this observation resulted in a broad social, political and academic awareness raising movement that started to advocate the universal inclusion in society of people suffering from any kind of impairment. Which brings us to the second concept we will zoom in on, namely inclusion. Inclusion is the general idea that people with disabilities should by no means be segregated but that society as a whole has to endeavour to create an environment in which these people can fully participate. The principle underlying this idea is that of universal design, or design for all. That is, a human-centred design that starts from the observation that a carelessly designed environment can create barriers for certain groups of people in society and that wants to improve the quality of life of all users by starting any design process with the following question. How can a product, communication via sound, word or image, a building or a public space be as aesthetic and functional as possible for the largest possible group of potential users? This is the question any accessibility manager or coordinator should start from when preparing and organizing an event. And it is the question the following units will try to answer 
as extensively as possible.